So the question is, how do the guitar sides affect the tone? Or how do the guitar sides affect the final output of the acoustic system that is the sound box? So the sides are actually very important to the sound. They're just not important in the same way that the top and back are important. The top and back, as you may already know, need some degree of flexibility so they can essentially act like an air pump. The top is excited by the pluck of the string and it vibrates and it in turn excites the air inside of the sound box, which the sound box is mostly an enclosed space, aside from the sound hole where the air escapes. Now after the top vibrates, some of that energy escapes out the sound hole, but some of that energy excites the back, which the back is also flexible enough to respond to that energy and act as almost like a um, counter pump to the top. So the vibrational frequencies of both the top and the back can sort of play off of each other. And this is where the sides come in. The sides are not flexible. The sides are rigid. So the sides essentially couple the top to the back. And this coupling is what allows the top and the back to play off of each other. In fact, if you were to apply the same considerations that you apply to the top and the back, that is, considerations of minimal bracing and vibrational responsiveness, well, you would actually destroy that coupling between the top and the back. The whole sound box would be like a chunk of jello at that point. So now to take the jello analogy a step further, imagine I'm holding a square of jello and imagine that somehow this square of jello is hollow on the inside and there's a single hole in that square of jello. Now if I had a microscopic ping pong ball and I threw it into that square of jello, how long on average do you think it would take for that little ping pong ball to bounce its way out of that ball of jello? Now if you can imagine it, what's happening is it's hitting one wall and that wall is whiplashing it off of that wall against another wall and because all of the walls are loose and all of the walls affect each other um, in several different dimensions, that ping pong ball is going to be chaos. It's going to bounce all over the place. It's going to take forever for it to find its way out the sound hole. Now when you have a um, flexible responsive face here, flexible responsive face here, but then it's held together by rigid sides all the way around. Now you can imagine how that ping pong ball bouncing around in there is going to be much more efficient in the way it finds its way out of that sound hole.